haven't really weighed in on Trump's actions in Syria yet, except through uh, a couple great interviews from the Texas Libertarian Party convention with Scott Horton uh, of antiwar.com and New Hampshire State Representative Brandon Finney, who is also an active member of the National Guard in New Hampshire. But someone else weighed in on this, and this is from Fairness and Accuracy in Reporting. Out of 26 major editorials on Trump's serious strikes, zero opposed. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've said in the past that one thing you can kind of give Trump credit for is fundamentally changing America's relationship with the mainstream media. But I may have overestimated both the cresting of the wave I thought he was writing and the effect of his contribution to it because it, it appears that the mainstream media still somehow thinks it can get away with this kind of blatant militaristic propaganda. A survey by FAIR of the top 100 papers in the United States by circulation found not a single editorial board opposed to Trump's April 13 airstrikes on Syria. 20 supported the strikes, while six were ambiguous as to whether or not the bombing was advisable. The remaining 74 issued no opinion about Trump's latest escalation of the Syrian war. I... I really am like readjusting my worldview in, in reading this story because I would think that we have come so far in shifting the paradigm that even Trump and his supporters being so distinctly anti-interventionist would have some effect on the mainstream media that this wouldn't be it. But the question then remains is it Trump's political pressure on these newspapers getting this? Are they, are they afraid to cross Trump? I, I don't think that's it. Which leads me to believe that, I know, shocking, right? That the American involvement in Syria is driven by the military industrial complex. I'm sure this is just flooring you right now. You're just... Oh my gosh, Adam, say it isn't so. Yes, I, I understand your, your, your dismay here. But the, the when, when you understand, it, it, it's frustrating. It's like the more you know, the harder it is to read the news with a straight face and, and, and it, it, the faces you would be making would be either just laughter, derision, or disbelief. But that's who still pulls the strings. That's who we're really up against. It's the military industrial complex. Remember, it was uh, the original coiner of that term, Dwight Eisenhower, who first uh, used it in his uh, farewell address from the presidency. He originally wanted to call it the military industrial congressional complex. And it, it might even be more accurate to call it the military industrial media congressional complex. All of these pillars of militarism that make death and destruction overseas possible. Now, again, it, I have been always looking at the upside in the, the airstrikes in Syria, not just the strikes themselves, but that this is the, the I mean, there are a lot of diverse opinions about should America be bombing Syria right now? Should the U.S. government be bombing Syria? And from, from everything that I've seen, public opinion is, is a lot more against it than this editorial board score would represent. And all of these factors that, that drive militarism are still there. Seven of the top ten newspapers by circulation, USA Today, Wall Street Journal, LA Times, New York Post, Chicago Tribune, Newsday and Washington Post, supported the airstrikes. New York Daily News, San Jose Mercury News offered no opinion, New York Times, ambiguous. Mostly lamenting the lack of congressional approval, but not saying that this meant the strikes were illegal or unwise. Now, this is just 
<clears throat> the the blatant hypocrisy by the New York Times. I, I don't. I, I guess the New York Times here is trying to maintain its credibility as as some bastion of of leftist journalism, something like that. But that they're going to say yes, it's Trump should have gotten congressional approval. But that congressional approval is meaningless because it's still a legal strike. No, it's it's illegal. It's fundamentally illegal. It, it, it is a war crime, what, what Trump is doing here. Now, again, I always point out, okay, 42 alleged dead in a chemical weapon strike in Syria recently. I, I don't know. 20 veterans commit suicide every day in this country, and Donald Trump wants to go bomb... You know, and, and, and it, it, I, I hope it's very limited in, in its effect. I, I mean, I hope that it, if what war has been reduced to now is governments blowing up other governments' military toys, then, hey, let them have it out until it's all gone. But make no mistake, a big part of what we are up against in seeking a free world is this conglomerate of large-scale financial interests. I guess Eisenhower left out the banking industry, right? Military, industrial, media, banking, congressional complex. I know I'm leaving out a lot of factors, but make no mistake, the two we're up against. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.